Hi guys, Jimmy McIntyre here. Today we're going to look at how easy it is to use luminosity masks in Instamask. Now essentially I'm going to show you some great techniques. It's not going to be too difficult, but if you've watched my Mastering Raya Pro course, you'll know most of this stuff already. Even though we don't use Instamask in there, it's the exposure blending techniques that are the most important thing. And of course, if you've watched the Art of Photography course, that's even more advanced and creative in terms of uh, exposure blending. Today we're going to look at matching, which I've taught in my Challenge Jimmy videos and in Mastering Raya Pro and the Art of Photography, and you'll see how important it is in exposure blending. Now, if you haven't actually watched my Mastering Raya Pro course, I highly encourage it. It will teach you everything you need to know about exposure blending, and it's not as difficult as you might think. Now, here are the two exposures that we're working with. We have a base exposure, which is very bright, and we have a darker exposure with our sky nicely exposed for, and that's quite dark. Now, the first thing I wanna do is actually add some pinks to this scene because the lavender feels a lot more purpley in real life. So I'm gonna bring up the tint in Adobe Camera Raw, and that looks much more like the real lavender feel, believe it or not. And let's just have a look at the darker exposure. Does that look okay? Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. I might make it a tiny bit warmer in the temperature. And once I'm done, I'm gonna choose both of these exposures and go to Lens Corrections and remove Chromatic Aberration and enable Profile Corrections. And I'm gonna hold down Shift and you'll see we have an option which is Open Objects. So I'm gonna press that. And with these two exposures in Photoshop, I'm just gonna press Stack. And now we have the exposures on top of each other with the dark exposure on top. Now guys, I should point out, Raya Pro 3.0 is coming out at the end of February. And we've got some great new functions, a totally new user-friendly design, and extra functions added to Instamask. I think you're gonna love it, and I'm really looking forward to sending that to you. Oh, and before I forget, if you buy Raya Pro 2.0 before that, you get free updates for life. So you'll have Raya Pro 2.0, and you can have Raya Pro 3.0 in February. So. If you're wondering whether or not to get it or to wait until 3.0 is available, you've got nothing to lose by getting it now. Now, with the darker exposure on top, I'm gonna to make that invisible, which we almost always have to do when we're exposure blending. And again, that's taught in the Mastering Raya Pro course. Now to generate the luminosity masks, obviously we can just create any mask here on Instamask, but I'm gonna choose, let's say Bright's one. And we wanna make a selection of the sky without the foreground. So essentially we want the foreground to be darker. So I'm gonna bring up the mid-tone slider until that is noticeably darker, just like that. And you see the sky's quite bright and white. So that means the sky's gonna be selected. Now all we need to do is press select. And now we've made this into a luminosity mask selection. And now in Instamask, we can press black M which is black mask, and that's gonna add a black mask to our dark exposure. Then we make this layer visible. We choose a paintbrush, make sure it's a white brush. And in Riot Pro 3.0, I'm gonna put a brush option here with black and white and things like that. So it's much easier, so you don't actually have to leave the panel. I'm also gonna include functions that are hide layer and make layer visible, so we can make these layers invisible or visible, and we can do it all in the panel. So it's much quicker. Now I'm gonna press Command and H or Control and H to hide the marching ants. And I'm just gonna pin in the sky from the darker exposure. And I'm gonna do a little bit on the foreground along here too. Now you'll see it looks a little bit unnatural. And the reason for that is because the foreground's just too bright. I'm gonna press Command and D and Control and D to deselect the marching ants. And I'm gonna make this mask invisible. So I'm going to disable the layer mask. So look at how bright the foreground is here in the brighter exposure. And look at how dark the foreground is in the darker exposure and how dark the sky is. Trying to blend these two together simply doesn't work because they're too many stops of light apart from each other. It's just an unnatural fit. And that's where matching comes in. I'm going to click here, double click on this thumbnail and you'll see Adobe Camera Raw opens up again. Now the foreground here is already too bright. We want it to be darker because that's gonna add a little bit more mood. So I'm gonna bring down the exposure to roughly 0.6. And now I'm just gonna press OK. And so immediately that looks much more natural. However, I'm still gonna open up my darker exposure just as I did before by double clicking on this thumbnail. And I'm gonna bring up the exposure 
and the shadows of that darker exposure. And I'm going to bring the highlights down because obviously we need that to be correctly exposed for. And I'm just going to press OK. Now watch what happens. You see everything brightened up a little bit in the foreground and that's made a much more natural blend between our two exposures. Now if you want to see how natural that blend is, usually we have problems around trees and things like that. But let's just zoom in. You notice the blend looks incredibly smooth. There's no black edging, no white edging. It's a perfect fit. So using luminosity masks, you can see it's pretty easy to blend these exposures and to come out with a fairly natural image. Now I'm just going to do a few more changes uh, just to make the image a little bit nicer. Firstly, I'm going to bring the shadows along with the curves layer. Again, we want to deepen that mood. So I'm going to keep going and the highlights are already a little bit bright. So I'm going to keep bringing that along and I'm actually going to bring my mid-tones along and darken it a bit more. And now just to soften those shadows a little bit because they're a, a bit too strong. I'm going to bring the mid-tones and shadows along again. I'm just going to soften those shadows. And I feel like when you do that with the contrast, when you bring down the, the mid-tones, make them darker, but also to create softer shadows, it creates quite a, a close, intimate feel in the image. So here's the before and after. You see it's open and it looks very nice, but now we have a little bit more mood and a little bit more contrast. Now the next thing I'm going to do is create some light bleeding. And I'm actually going to do that through Raya Pro, and I'm going to Enhance. And then I'm going to go to Enhancements and choose something called Glow Free. Now you see it's created a Glow Free layer and I'm going to choose my foreground colour and click on, let's say, um, this colour here, like a beige colour. Now I'm going to make this brush nice and big and I'm just going to paint in this area. And I'm going to make the opacity 100%. And you see we're brightening up that area quite a lot. Now I'm going to take my brush opacity and I'm going to bring that down to 40% and maybe paint over here and then down to 20% and paint further along each time. Then I'm going to bring the opacity down a tiny bit and so here's the before and after and you see we've added some beautiful light bleeding. Now I think it's a little bit strong in this corner here so I'm going to make a black brush and I'm just going to mask it out, set my brush opacity at 50%. And there's the before and after. So we've added an extra dimension in our image. And to exaggerate this light bleeding, I'm going to open up a curves layer and I'm going to create a vignette, just a gentle vignette by bringing down the mid-tones in the curve. I'm going to press Command and I or Control and I and that'll make a black mask on the curves layer. Now I'm going to create a white foreground brush, make it a little bit bigger, set my opacity to 100% and I'm just going to paint in slightly darker area up at the top of the image and to the right here and also to the foreground. We want to push people's eyes to the highlighted areas in the fields. Now obviously we can bring down the opacity of that layer if it's a little bit strong. So now we've done that why don't we add just a little bit of contrast here through some dodging and burning at the top of the fields where the um, lavender fields are highlighted. Now it's hard to create this mask because if we choose a Brights 1 mask we'll see that the sky is also selected and so is the field. And we just really want to select this highlighted part of the field. Now if we go to these colour masks, you know we've got green, blue, magenta, or if we go to red, you'll see we've got a really strong selection here of these highlighted areas. We've also got a really strong selection of the sky, so we can actually remove the sky from our selection. And we'll do that quite easily by first pressing OK, and this creates that luminosity mask. Then we press Combi, and this saves that luminosity mask that we just created. Now we want a selection of just the sky. So I'm going to disable all the layers, and here we have a good selection of the sky. If I press Brights 1, you see we've got an excellent selection of the sky there and if I bring up the mid-tones I'm excluding the field from the selection and now we've only got the sky really in the selection. So to remove that selection from our original selection all we need to do is press subtract, subbed. And now we've got a selection just of this foreground. We've still got a little bit of the sky up here but it won't be too much of a problem. And to dodge and burn, all we need to do is press D and B. Now I'm choosing a white paintbrush, or in fact, let's change the color of that and I'll choose this color here, a light beige. 
and I'm just going to paint in this foreground. And you see it's not spilling over too much into the sky. Now we don't really want it too much on this area here to the left because that's already quite bright. So I'm going to choose this mask, choose a black paintbrush, and then I'm going to make it a bigger brush, 50% opacity, and paint it out. So there you go. And that's the before and after. You see we've added some nice brightness to these areas by intersecting masks. That's adding and subtracting masks. And we haven't brightened up the sky or anything like that, just the foreground here. So what we've seen there are two ways to use luminosity masks. A simple way to exposure blend and a more advanced way of intersecting masks to target very specific tones. So you can see the potential for this in making very unique changes in your image. Now for this photo, I think this is absolutely fine. Maybe a couple of contrast adjustments, possibly an autumn effect. But really I don't want to do too much with it. It looks okay to me. So that's it for now. I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial and I look forward to sending you more tutorials next year.